What's going on, everyone? It's Sean O'Connell, the managing director here at Cinema Blend, and we are talking Hamilton in the Cinema Blend offices nonstop since the film has debuted on Disney Plus. All right, all right, that's what I'm talking about. Some of us have been able to see the production on stage. Some of us are seeing it for the very first time, thanks to Disney Plus. And one of the things that we have been circling around is who gives the very best performance in Hamilton. And so I'm not an expert by any stretch in the show. Um, I got to see it for the very first time on Disney Plus. So I wanted to bring along Samantha Labatt, Corey Chichizola, and Eric Eisenberg, three experts in Hamilton here on Cinema Blend. What are the odds the gods would put us all in one spot? I'm gonna just sort of preface it and say, I don't necessarily think that there is a bad performance in Hamilton. I think everybody really rises to the, the challenge of the material and brings their A game, but there are definitely some people who stand out a little bit more than others. And I'm gonna start with Samantha, um, for you to tell us who you would choose as the person who gives the very best performance in Hamilton, and then briefly tell me why. The answer is 100% Leslie Odom Jr. Can I buy you a drink? He is the only one that I forget that I'm watching a show while watching. Like any time that he is on the stage, I'm like, that is Aaron Burr. Honestly, it's kind of draining. And with other people, there are moments like just with Chris Jackson, for example, he's got great notes where I'm like, oh, that was a really good note. His voice is like butter, great song. But it's, it's a little different because I still feel like I'm watching people perform as opposed to him. It's just, he is the character. And is it harder too because that's sort of a villainous role or is meant to almost be a villainous role? Yeah, I think so. Um, Cause I, like my mom always says, like I can't stand Aaron Burr. Like every time he's on stage, she's like, he upsets me so much. And I'm just like, I really feel for him. Like I'm sad for him. He makes me cry just as much as everyone else. Eric, how about yourself? Who would be your choice for uh, the strongest performance, the best performance in Hamilton? So I am gonna have to go with David Diggs in the dual part of uh, Marquis de Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson. Don't act surprised, you guys. Admittedly, I was paying a lot of specific attention to David Diggs just because I have known about David Diggs for a long time before that and had just like been aware of his performance in Hamilton. So like like stuff like I mean, uh, Blind Spotting is an incredible movie. The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt upload. So I admittedly was putting a little bit of extra focus watching his performance and. He doesn't play the showiest of characters. It's not Aaron Burr or Hamilton or George Washington, but he just, every single time he comes out on stage, he absolutely shines. His talent just, as lyrically speaking, is absolutely off the charts. And it just, his presence was just so incredible and surprising. And honestly, I'm just gonna say the rap battles are the highlight <laughs> of the show for me, so. Hey, and if you don't know, now you know, Mr. President. I, you know, multiple, actors perform multiple roles throughout the show, but it was when he returned as Jefferson that, that it really stood out to me. I was like, oh, he's back. <laughs> well, he's back in a different role. It almost feels like a kind of testament to how great he is because it's like, okay, Marquis de Lafayette does not play a role in the second act of this play, but how can we keep David Diggs around? Oh, let's give him this incredibly showy entrance into the second act where he basically catches up every, everybody with everything that's going on in one, right. again, one of the best songs in the show. So uh, Corey, are you agreeing with either of them or going in a different direction? I'm going in a different direction, but I they're both stunning choices, especially, I mean, to piggyback off of the Leslie Odom Jr. conversation. I, I did a second viewing um, this weekend, and the second viewing, I was just really focused on him. And he, I just, like, his final song after the duel, I just like wept and wept and I just felt for him. So I definitely understand that. Uh, but no, I'm gonna go with um, Renee Elise Goldsberry's Angelica. Satisfied is how I fell in love with Hamilton. The lyric about being the oldest and the wittiest. In the gossip in New York City is in cities. I was like, get, get out of town. <laughs> Sign me up for this show. Like, the, the, what is going on? Um, and I just was so impressed by her ability to give a stage performance and a film performance at the same time. That's not easy. <laughs> you know, so many stage actors look crazy on the Tony Awards because they're giving you stage acting and then there's a camera off suddenly in their face and they have crazy eyes, you know. And her, she gave such a emotional experience. I felt all of her emotions throughout every bit of her scene and then you just can't deny that satisfied is like one of like the one of the best songs of the show uh 
And then my actual favorite song is Take a Break, which is another big one because I'm a sucker for grammar. With the comma after dearest. Like they made grammar sexy in that song. How? <laughs> So I saw like a like a Twitter flood of people getting behind Take a Break as the best song on the on the soundtrack. And it may, I have to go back and sort of revisit it because there was a ton of people who were getting behind that song as the number one choice. And it's really quick. It's another one like all of her stuff in particular is like she's spitting fire pretty much the whole show. And mm. so that one is one where if you're not trying to listen to the various Macbeth references that they're making you can just like not hear it and because it just goes by so quickly tomorrow when tomorrow when tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day and it's kind of amazing that um and let's get around to this topic of conversation um none of us mentioned lin-manuel miranda <laughs> um and i want um samantha start there just in that it's not we're not really trying to insult lin-manuel miranda right. it's just he's almost set up everyone else in his cast to be better than him. Yes, love him, absolutely love him. He's not a singer as much as everyone else. The problem is I got a lot of brains, but no polish. One of the things that I think is really cool is Leslie is the closest to the studio recording in the show, which I love, and I know that's not necessarily the point, but Lynn changes the most. And I think it was just a lot of different struggles with breath control, and he was moving around a lot that like, it's almost completely different than the studio recording. And that kind of like, if you're used to it and you've listened to the soundtrack a million times, like I have, you're like waiting for certain stuff and it doesn't happen. Oh, that's really interesting. It's a little bit of a letdown. About that. But okay. A letdown, really? The Disney Plus version? Yeah, I would say just because there are so many like notes and the timing and stuff, there are, there are so parts of the songs where they slowed down or they added an interlude or something to make room for them to move around and give people space to breathe. Um, mm. But with Lynn in particular, there's a lot of the emotion and stuff that like when he's crying and singing, it's a little pitchy. Whereas I think um, like Philippa Sue, for example, like her crying and singing is still spot on the note. So I think people that aren't super musically inclined, it's not gonna matter. Like I don't, I, I wouldn't say Lynn's performance is bad by any means, but he 100%, I think, gave all his friends the room to really, really shine and stand out. Speaks absolutely to the testament of the show, also that we didn't mention Philippa Sue, who is devastatingly good. <laughs> Have I done enough? Will they tell our story? I mean, just unbelievable. Uh, Corey, I, you might know this off the top of your head. Who won the Tonys from Hamilton? Who, who actually took them home um, that night? So... Leslie got Best Actor. He beat Lynn for Best Actor. They okay. were dual. There's a lot of Hamilton competing against Hamilton in that year sure. of the Tonys. So, like, David won for Supporting Actor, and then he beat Jonathan Groff. Awesome. Wow. Renee sure, won sure. for Best Supporting Actress. Um, but Philippa Sue did not win the Tony. She was okay. beaten by okay. the great Cynthia Revo. <laughs> in the color purple. Um, and I mean, you didn't briefly mention it, but I think also Jonathan Groff deserves some just recognition. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's on the stage all by himself. He really has to carry every single moment. Oh, his songs, though, are amazing interludes. Uh, like, obviously, a lot of people have been paying attention to the spitting, and it speaks to the emotion that he puts behind it yeah. all. And <laughs> also just that da 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 it's just been going through my head yeah. every so five minutes ever since I ever since I watched the show. So my the hardest part about Groff, and and I I agree with you that he's outstanding, but I feel weird singling him out when there's so many really talented people in Hamilton who have dominant roles, and to be like, yeah, but the king who shows up for just a few minutes is the but best I, performance. But it yeah. really is. He's great. I'm your man. I think that honestly, it's kind of part of my argument for David Diggs giving the best performance though, is that because like Angelique and Arenberg obviously have such powerful material to work with and mm. like it's it's emotionally available and like there really is drama behind it. Meanwhile, Thomas Jefferson pretty much exclusively exists on the polit politics side of things. And it's amazing just what he's able to get out of it from both just a per just expressing a personality with the character of Thomas Jefferson, but also just to break it down, I love the Schoolhouse Rock element of it. I just like the idea that like this is giving me an entertaining look 
look at history and he puts mm -hmm. it in such a great context that is just so magnetic i love it and he's like spitting fire he uh, oh, yeah. he's yes. fully spitting fire he has like two big when the whole of uh, washington isn't gonna listen to dissonant this is the difference this kid is out I screamed. <laughs> he has the only, he's got the only lines in the soundtrack that I don't know, because it's its the only person that goes way too fast. And yeah, even, the, the, if you gotta put some thought into the letter, the sooner the better, it's get your right hand man back. Yes, that's the line. <laughs> but it's so fast, but also so clear. Like you never actually, you never lose the lyrics. You know exactly what's happening. And that, that enunciation is just talent. That is just pure, pure talent. <laughs> I'll go the opposite route and just ask you guys if there's anybody who um, their performance wasn't uh, completely serviced by the Disney Plus uh, version that we got to see. Did anybody, I'm not going to say it came off as bad because I don't think anyone's bad, but does anyone who, who uh, you know they're capable of better? No. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Silence. Immigrants. We, we get, get the, the job, job done. done. I will piggyback on the, just the comments from earlier with that is just like that. I mean, Lin-Manuel Miranda, I mean, he could be called the weakest, but again, it's it's basically because like he is the pure anchor for the show. Like the show doesn't mm -hmm. exist without him. It's his show. And again, like Samantha was saying, he just built everyone up around him. He gave everyone mm -hmm. else the material and he obviously is the rock at the center of everything. He is the like main player. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. It's just, it's a problem of comparison. It's just he surrounded himself with so much incredible talent that like, yeah, that just, that's a side effect. Hamilton, sit down. It's also like how we view his part though, because like he doesn't have the voice that gives you chill singing wise, but he's rapping much more than he's singing. And he's yeah. like to be Diggs is like, really spitting fire there during a lot of the show and doing these really weird minute ways to connect the rhythm to the lyrics and so like he does act it really hard he acts the show out oh he does uh, Oh, definitely. Right. So for people who were relying on Disney Plus for this to be their first introduction to Hamilton uh Corey I know you said you watched like bootleg copies of of the theater show. I'm gonna Samantha, go to you, Broadway you were... jail now. Thank you. No, listen, <laughs> hey. Everything is legal in New Jersey. We Tell all look at, we seek out copies of these things right. that we crave. I totally understand. You guys all think this is a great representation of the show and a, and a really good introduction to it for people who are just learning about it now for the very first time or, or being able to see it for the very first time. Yeah, I think I will mention, um, Sean, you had said in your review that with the with the film version, you are limited to seeing, you know, what the director and the camera wants you to see. And I will say um, that bothers me a little bit because there are little things that I like to do when I saw it live um, was for a whole song, I would just choose one person in the ensemble and just sure. focus on them because there's a lot of really cool background details that you don't necessarily get when they're only focusing on the leads in some parts. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think it's a fantastic representation. I think it's very, very close to what you'll get in the theater. I do think people that I've watched with, I've seen it four times because I'm forcing everyone to watch this. My God. People that have watched with me for the very first time ever were a little confused, especially in the first act. And these are people going in totally blind, know nothing of the show, never heard the soundtrack. So in that sense, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Like, is it worth researching, listening to beforehand? Um, yes. I honestly, I will say that like, it took me a little bit, a, a minute to kind of catch up a little bit. And, uh, but eventually you do just fall into the rhythm. Uh, obviously if you've listened to the soundtrack beforehand, you have the advantage, but I don't necessarily, like I purposely didn't listen to the soundtrack for a long, long time because I figured like, I'd really just rather see it in its original context. That's the way that it's meant to be seen. And I want to see it that way. And mm -hmm. unfortunately that's not always the case with, mo uh, with a lot of Broadway shows where you don't get that opportunity. Thankfully, this is one of those cases. It must be nice. It must be nice. I mean, and especially I'd also say just I'd say what did I miss as the second act opener? Anything that you really didn't get in the first act, you can pretty much catch up from that point forward and still stay on the ball with everything. Uh, and to also just, I mean, to echo some of the sentiments about the, the cut, I will agree that I actually think that the problem with the presentation is just that it's kind of over edited. There are just too, it's too many like cutaways to specific shots. I feel like it would be so much better if it was just kind of like a static view of the stage with maybe a few punch ins for just emotional close up moments. Because I mean, ultimately that's what this is. This isn't a movie. Like this isn't supposed to be having like choreographed cameras that interact with everything that's going on the stage. This is a stage play. 
And so, like, I, I just feel like they did try and embellish it a little bit too much, but at the same time, I do think that it's, I mean, it's what we've got, and so how, how can you complain? Such a blunder, sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. Why he even brings the thunder? Well, I am not going to try to break any sort of tie, uh, and I think that your choices are all spectacular, uh, and it goes to show the strength of the ensemble that uh, there are multiple people that we could have chosen. Uh, obviously, they gave their opinions as to why they chose who they chose, but now now we want to hear from you guys. Uh, you've been able to see Hamilton on Disney Plus. Maybe you've been lucky enough to see the original uh, Broadway production with the original cast. Uh, so head down to the comment section and tell us who you would choose as the person who gave the strongest performance in Hamilton. Uh, tell us why, and then if you want to also include your favorite song by the person who you are singling out, because I think that goes a long way towards um, developing your opinions on uh, on who you would select as the highlight from Hamilton. While you're down there, do me a favor, hit subscribe and turn on your notifications, because that way every time that we put a new video like this on Cinema Blend's YouTube page, you guys can be the first ones to come over and watch it. And until the next time we all gather together, guys, thank you very much for joining us for this Hamilton conversation. I'll see you guys soon. So I was wondering if you could like divulge for me for a second. Can we like spit a little bit of satisfied for the for the cinema blend viewers <laughs> oh on God, social absolutely media? Absolutely will. So so so. So this it is what it feels like, like to match with someone so much that you love. What the hell is the catch? catch? It's the feeling. The feeling. We're seeing the light. It's been pregnant with the key and the kite. You see it, right? Oh my God.